Hello everybody, Ergoth here with a texturing tutorial for stylized materials. Uh, so we're just going to do it on just a basic crate, and crates and barrels and stuff like that. Even though they've been done a thousand times, there's a reason for it. They're great assets to show off, um, for one, simplicity, um, the, the wood and metal textures, especially in barrels, are always important things in any model um, and stylized wood is obviously super easy to show on a crate so all we have here is a basic you know very low poly some beveled edges crate UV'd with all faces cut well each each side I should say cut out and laid out and it is modeled in such a way that uh, these faces offset in a little bit so that we get a nice clean texture without re any real stretching happening with this type of layout. So nice and simple. And then we're just gonna take it over into ZBrush and show the uh, how simple it is to create stylized wood texture. Okay, so here we have our object. I have it subdivided up to 8 million points. And we're just going to simply draw out our boards. Um, this is definitely not going to be a ZBrush lesson. So if uh, you're unfamiliar with ZBrush tools, I would definitely suggest taking a look for something in there. Now, of course, Maya does have simple sculpting in, in it now, too. So you could also always try to do this in Maya if you don't have ZBrush. I personally have not enjoyed trying to play with the Maya tools. It's very clunky, very slow. Trying to get some, uh, oh, too much, a little bit of texture on that. And then we are just going to draw in our wood texture. Nice and simple. Nothing too complicated that has to happen with this. So, just going to keep it nice and loose. Just do something like that. That's a little too close. Having a Pen tablet obviously makes things easier because, or really any kind of tablet, pressure is always super important in sculpting. Good old pen pressure.
So you're basically just doing this, you know, getting something that you like on all six sides. And I'm just going to speed through this. There's no point, you know, sitting and watching this in real time. And we'll get right into the texturing part of things. Okay, so now let's get to the texturing part of this. So first thing we need to do is bake our maps and I'm going to bake the normals separately, subsampling to 4x4. Four four. Uh, the rest is fine because it's just the one object. Okay, so with our maps done, we're going to put in a fill layer. And we're going to turn off metal. We don't need that. And let's get a base color for our wood. And I want something a little reddier. Let's do that. So that's our base. Let's label that. And we're going to duplicate that. And this first one will be our edges. And we will create a black mask. And then we will create a generator. And that generator will be a mask editor. Actually, we'll give this more space here. Oh, not what I wanted. There we go. So, curvature I want up all the way. Ambient occlusion we want up all the way. 
and then yep, make sure that the mode is set to edges. And oh, so you want this to be a touch darker than what you had. And actually set it as a white mask, sorry, not a black mask. Just looking at it, I'm like, that's not giving me the results I want. And I'm going to turn down. And then just slowly turn up. settings here. Um, I'm going to adjust my roughness to get I want a little bit of shine, but not much. Okay, there we go. See what it's doing? Or... Put sharp up all the way. And let's add a filter. Sharpen filter. Sharpen that intensity. Let's uh, set it to about two. And then I want to adjust my levels just a little bit on that. There we go. And then so I'm actually going to lighten that just a touch. And we're going to duplicate again. Oh, duplicate. And this is going to be cavities. And with the same mask, we'll go to our mask editor. We want to change to cavities and we're going to go darker on this one and you can play with your colors throughout this process like once you get all the way done you're, you might want to make some adjustments to get everything just right and then the next thing we're going to do is a new fill that is just for color. And let's do oh, kind of a, maybe like a yellowish brown on this. And then let's add Filter, I believe it's under filters. Oh. Maybe it's not filters. Where, where is it again? It's not a fill. No. Is it that again? Is it a generator? Oh, yeah, it's a generator, sorry. It's a light. Let's 
and we're going to set this to divide. And then create a levels for that. Ninety, ninety, and we need this to be set as a soft light, and then so this is coming from ninety degrees. You see what it's done here. It's created quite the uh, metalness. So on that light, we want to make sure we set all of that off. And you can, of course, adjust your settings here. So where the light is coming from. And I maybe set this light the wrong. Maybe I want this 180. Or is it 270? 270, that's what I want. I want that coming down from the top. Okay. Throw down the opacity on that, so it's not quite as harsh. Maybe we'll Set that to an even 50. Even 50. Let's see, let's see what it's doing. Make your adjustments as you see fit. So I'm going to pull the, the attenuation back a little bit here. There we go. And then we are going to duplicate that and flip that light. This one to be 90. So now it is going to be coming the other way. And I'm just going to change my color variation. We're going to go to more of a dark ready. Maybe turn that up a little bit. Okay. 
perfect. And actually, before we go any further, let's actually put all of this into a folder. So you can save it as a smart material when you're all done. So this is color light top and this is color light bot. I'll do another fill here, just color and we're actually going to grab the ambient occlusion map for this and actually sorry I want to do this as a as a mask white mask as a fill and that fill is our ambient occlusion and let's set that as a soft light as well and then again we can play with just our overall to get your colors and saturation shadows so that's your AO boost um, and actually let me invert this because I can't remember it's been a while since I've done this um, I did want that white. Okay. 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 So I think I'm actually going to change this dirt generator, invert this mask, Let's turn that dirt up. Okay. And then I want to create a edge highlight. So we're going to do another fill. And just color again. I want this to be A lighter color that's in our range and let's grab a white mask a fill and this is going to be our curvature map okay 
and then let's add a levels to that. I'm just gonna kind of push. Cause I want to get. Yeah, that's so. I want that kind of. I want a little bit of a highlight. On there maybe back down to our base color to turn all the they're on somewhere well maybe it's just coming directly from this let's get that roughness back up a bit We don't need height at all. Um, and then um, let's do another filler. So this is our edge highlights. And let's just grab something in the, a darker. Brown. We'll add a generator. Sorry, I want to add a mask and then a generator. And actually, let's not even, let's just do a fill actually. Let's control this a bit more. Let's grab a grunge. So that's a brushed grunge. Do this as maybe a soft light. Now, I think this would work really nice if we can get it moving along our grains more, which isn't really something we can get. That, that would actually look really good in a wood texture, this. But maybe what if we... Just give that a bit of a... That way it's just an extra little bit of variation. And then from there, we do one more fill. And we want, oh, where is it in here? I always forget. Baked lighting, stylized that in here. We actually don't need the fill. And then from here, so if we just look at our base color, and we, so diffuse only, Sorry, I do want diffuse and specular. So 
some of the AO. Let's make sure I get the right settings here. And then you can set your edge highlights and everything here. Bake your light in from what? So the intensity is nothing right now. So we turn this intensity up. You can see we're shifting around where the uh, baked lighting goes. I think we want to turn down our edge highlights a little bit. Hmm, do we want to do it that way or with our levels? Yeah, let's do it with our levels. Get some of that readiness back in there. And then, so as you can see, it's all these different pieces are using the cavity and the AO largely to, you know, fill in those spaces, um, add highlights on that curvature and that AO, add in extra shadow. Um, so, you know, and, th and this is how you make your own smart materials. And, you know, depending on what the object is, it's going to change completely how you would do this. Now, say, for example, it wasn't even, let's, um, let's go back to material. So, say it's actually a realistic look that you're going for. Now, with that normal map, you're not going to really get that. Um, but you'd basically do the exact same thing over again. Let me see. Brown, and another fill. And let's look for some grun, actually, scratches. That is not what we want. We want this as a black mask. Fill and then put that in. So we can let's find one that's more that's more complete. Um, If you so you can see oh, let's move that to ninety. And it, it already looks like a veneer, just just from that. Um, maybe we want to go to two. It's even bigger. And then let's say we.
duplicate this and we want oh that's another directional let's check out the grunges so we can get a good is there one for wood maybe Is this oh yeah see look at that we got a a wood material there and we can drop those play with our color a bit and then play with some height and then you can like and you can mask off as well, right? So, say this, you only want it to affect this face, and then that way, you know, it takes some time doing it this way, but you could just in Substance Painter create all your normals in your height. Now, obviously, that's why we bake. You know high poly normals and stuff like that because it's while you can just do this all in substance if you wanted to um, it's probably not the quickest way to do it uh, but the power of substance is very very strong so you know make sure you're utilizing everything that's in there let's push put fill here go to our hard surface tools and actually I don't even think we need those I think we can just set and you could just you can just draw in your normals and like I could actually do my my wood texture right in here if I really wanted to we could take the time to actually do everything that you did in ZBrush Right in substance. And create whatever you want. So there's a lot of power here. A lot of stuff that you can do. Um, so the biggest reason I bring this all up is oh, what did I do oh <laughs> that's what I did I uh, removed all the All the bake map stuff. Um, let's put it all back. So, yeah, the, the lesson here is it's really easy 
to just go to Smart Materials, grab a Smart Material, toss it on, and be done with it. Like we could grab, oh, which one? Actually, I really, actually, I think this is a modif a modified one, one that I've adjusted. Um, but you know, super easy to just grab a smart material. And let it do all the work. Um, it's just you're not going to get the uh, you're not going to get that fine tuning, that personalization. Plus, it's there's not as much gratification for yourself um, when you do that. Like making, learning how to make your own smart materials will help you so much in the future. And you know. In the meantime, while you're learning, grab a smart material and see how it's made. Because everything that's in here, you can do yourself. It's just learning how to break it down and, and what the stuff is doing. So, you know, go in, take a look at a smart material, and then try to reproduce it from scratch. That's really good practice. It's, it's exactly what I did to try and get better at texturing. Because texturing is definitely a weak point for me. Um, it's something that I try to work on constantly to get better and better. And as I've gotten better and I've learned more, I've realized just how much power texturing has. So don't be afraid of it. I hope this helped. As always, if there's anything you have questions about, anything you need help with, uh, please like and subscribe, leave a comment. And once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.